Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achena and welcome to episode 77 of Game Programming. So we're going to continue the particle class in this episode and hopefully get some actual animation going. So what we've got right now is a simple particle class here. Oh, let me mention straight away that I made an error, pretty big error in the last episode. Not many of you pointed out, I think only one person did. Um, but um, it was a pretty big error and I guess that's the result of me being tired. Um, so what I did here is... Um, Obviously, this um, this particles uh, array list was a bit flawed here, and I'll explain why in a minute. So basically, the deal is that if you use this constructor, which is probably going to be the most common constructor we use, because um, um, usually you want more than one particle, right? Um, what happens is uh, when we use this constructor, we actually um, you know we call this, and that's all fine. But over here, what we do is we add to the particle array a new instance of this constructor, right? And what this constructor does is it adds itself into the particle array. <laughs> so what we're doing is we're actually adding the same instance twice. And what, so basically what we're doing is we're going to end up with twice the particles that we want. So what we should really do is we could do this multiple ways. The easiest way is probably just to remove this particles.add thing. Um, but the thing is that's not exactly going to work if we do it this way. And the reason that's not going to work is because um, these guys are going to create their own instances of this particles array list, and that's not really going to work. So the best way to do it is um, not to do that, is actually to get rid of this particles that add this here, okay? And just have it like that, okay? Um, and in that case, we don't need this thing here. Well, we do kind of, but what we need to do is actually manually add it. So particles add this, okay? And what that will do is that'll instantiate all of these values for us that we want to instantiate here. Um, and then it will add itself into the thing. Um, in fact, we should probably do this after, just for good practice, um, as well as adding, of course, new instances into it, okay? So um, that's, a, that's, a, that's actually a fix for a potential bug in the future. Not a game-breaking bug, but certainly just not what we want to have in the game. So now that that's out of the way, let's continue. So the thing is, what we want to do now is animate these particles. Now, um, to do that, as you know, when we do any kind of animation, we have variables called XA and YA, okay? And that's essentially just the, the X amount that we want to move by and the Y amount that we want to move by. Um, so let's go ahead and do that now. Uh, we'll make those two variables. But because particles and, you know, the whole, um, the whole deal with... Um, with having um, particle animation is that it's to do with physics and stuff like that. We want to have uh, doubles as the um, as the actual uh, type of variable here, not integers. So um, over here under life, I'm just going to make two protected ints. In fact, life should probably be, be protected. And sorry, not ints, doubles called um, xa and ya. Okay, and this is going to be um, essentially uh, the amount of pixels it moves in the x-axis. And YA is going to be the amount of pixels it moves by on the Y axis. And, um, whoops, someone was calling me, sorry. Um, <clears throat> as if my phone was ringing. Okay, so, um, yeah, so this is going to be the amount of pixels that we move by on the Y axis. Now, these are doubles because we're going to do some pretty advanced maths on them. So, what we want to do is obviously give these guys a value. Now, in Entity, we do have um, this random thing here, which is good. Um, so we'll use that. Um, over here in particles under sprite, I'm just going to make this dot xa equal to random dot next Gaussian. Now you guys might be like, what on earth is next Gaussian? Gaussian is essentially, um, it's going to give you a random number between about minus one and one. So between negative one and one, um, except it's going to give you a normal distribution of it. So in other words, it's going to give you like a bell curve distribution. So it'll be more um, likely for the numbers to be around zero than around one or negative one. Okay, so you guys can search up a, a bit more about that um, in in the uh, if if you want on on the internet. It's, say it's a Gaussian or a normally distributed. I'm not sure. I've never heard it being called Gaussian before. That's just I don't know why they called it that. But it is a normally distributed distributed value. So if you've done um, statistics or something like that, you probably know what that is. Um, I might cover it in uh, in more depth in the in depth series if I ever end up doing that. But um, Leave it like that for now. And we'll do the same for YA. And obviously this is going to give them different values since we're calling this next Gaussian method again. Um, and that's pretty good. Okay, that's um, that's looking pretty good. So once we've done this, um, what we want to do is 
uh, kind of animated. And we can see what that looks like. Okay, this this will be interesting. If we just go ahead and, because I really want to like break this down for you guys to make it, um, you know, just a bit more legible and so you guys can really understand uh, what's going on here. So we're going to um, hit up this dot y uh, equal to x a and y a. Now clearly these guys are not um, are not uh, integers, right? So we can't do that. Now we could do this, right? We could do, we could of course just cast it to an integer, but the thing is we're gonna lose a lot of precision and a lot of data by doing this because it's going to actually basically make, make this only move by one or negative one and that's gonna be a bit of a problem. So we can't really do it that way. Instead what we need to do is make two more doubles called XX and YY. I'm just calling it this like, just for, I don't know, because it makes sense, but you guys can call this whatever you want. It's basically our actual x variable. So we'll set this dot x, x equal to x and this dot y, y equal to y, okay? Now the difference, of course, between x, x and x is that x is an integer and x, x is a double. That's a big difference because now what we can do is actually do this operation and only cast it to an integer when we render it. So let's take a look at rendering this. Rendering this is gonna be pretty simple, all right? Screen dot render sprite, okay? and we'll render it at um, xx, yy, uh, with the sprite, and fix, what on earth is fixed? Oh, yes, of course, um, yeah, true. Fixed means that it um, it's like motion track to our thing, so in other words, it moves with the map, it's stuck to the level. Um, now, of course, that gives us an error because we're providing um, two doubles here, so all we need to do here is cast it to an integer. All right, and this will give us precision, right? Because this is, we're, we're rendering it here. So it's cool to do this. This is gonna give us maximum, this is gonna still, this is gonna still give us maximum precision here. Um, okay, cool, right? So that's, um, oh, did I really do this? I meant plus equals, whoops. Um, so that's going to uh, essentially give us some basic particle animation. What we're gonna do probably in the next episode, I'll demonstrate this in a minute and probably play around with it, but in the next episode, we'll cover a, a more advanced uh, Z variable. So in other words, we'll simulate um, more or less depth, but but more of, um, it's not really depth, it's more of um, like the floor. We'll kind of simulate a floor so that particles can bounce off of the floor and kind of, you know, maybe stop and not just go down forever because that's obviously not realistic in this kind of environment. Um, but let's take a look at what we've got here. So what we need to do now is actually create a bunch of particles. Now, for me, the best way to test this, obviously, because we could just spawn a bunch here, but the best way to test this is probably gonna be on collision. Um, that's just how I like to do it. So let's open up the mob class. And over here, basically, let's just say that if um, there is a collision, um, so in other words, if there's no collision, we'll move the player. If there is a collision though, let's actually add a bunch of particles to the map at the player's location. So we can do that really simply. Um, we'll make a new particle here called particle P for example, equal new, equals new particle. And uh, X will, will hit to X and Y will put, will set to Y. So the player's X and Y. Life, we haven't implemented that yet. So it really doesn't matter what it is. And amount will set to 50. Okay, um, and once we've done that, let's go ahead and add this to the level. Remember, you have to do that so that it updates and renders. So level dot add p. Okay, so now we've added this part, this this particle to the level. So let's hit the uh, debug button or the run button, whatever, and see if this works. Okay, so you can see we get a bunch of particles when we crash into the um, the wall, okay? So every time we crash into the wall, we get a bunch of particles. Now that's cool, but the issue with that is that, um, well, first of all, we haven't implemented life yet, so these guys actually stay here forever, as you can see. But um, also the, the problem is that, you can kind of see there's no gravity, right? Let's increase this a bit. Um, make sure you don't put this up too high because obviously we haven't actually implemented the removal of them, so that's a problem. Let's set this maybe to 500. And performance, is, performance should be very good with this, especially when we, imp when we implement the removal. Um, let's go up here. Okay, so um, what we're getting here is um, more or less no gravity, right? This is kind of happening. We're kind of, you know, they're kind of going everywhere because of course this is a Gaussian distribution. Um, but the, the issue that we have here, and you can see that the cool thing about this is they're at, they're at random speeds as well. 
Um, the issue with this is that they don't really have any gravity. They kind of keep going forever and they don't, you know, they don't feel like they actually hit the floor or anything. So that's what we're going to talk about next episode because it's a bit more complex. But essentially, um, that's, uh, that's how that works. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of game programming. Um, one thing that we could do probably just to probably simulate this a bit better is instead of having, um, this happening when we hit the wall, let's actually, uh, set it off at a projectile collision. So in, in our projectile class, specifically in our wizard projectile, uh, we've got the, um, in update, if there's a tile collision, remove, uh, let's actually to that, let's actually just add this code into that. Okay. Um, now what's the deal here? Oh, okay. So we need to cast this into an integer. Okay. Let's take a look at that. So now if we shoot, we should get a bunch of particles here. Yeah. So you can see how that's kind of working. Um, we're only getting a few for some reason, but, um, we'll talk about that more next episode as we implement the other stuff. But, um, essentially what's happening here is we're getting particles as we crash into, as we, as our projectile shoots into the wall. So yeah. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of game programming and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.